people. So, so what are some of your influences? How did you get here? My biggest queen in the world, I think, is Nina Simona. Uh, she, uh, she, because she, she, she was a, she was a warrior, you know, she did what she wanted to do, and she, she sang what she wanted to sing, you know, um, uh, she was really strong. She was more than a singer, she was a special person in this world, you know, she came to, to send a message to the world and then she left. So, um, especially about more, more than her voice or her spirit or her compositions, her piano playing, for me, was her message that was so clear and so strong. Uh, but I have some other big influences in Cuba. My favorite composer from Cuba is called Malta Andes. Thanks God she's still alive. My favorite singer for Cuba is called La Lupe. Yeah, yeah that's my that's my other crazy queen. She, yeah, she was so you know this type of spontaneous girls. Uh, she was so expressive. She was an actress, like like an actress. You know, she used to go into every single. Uh, lyric that she was saying every single word was had life for her and she she used to express every single song in a in a different way but in a cuban way and for me for me the most beautiful thing from la, la lupe is that she was always cuban even when she was singing in english in spanish or any other language she was cuban and in my case I love to sing in different languages. I love to sing in, in English, in Spanish. I like to sing in Portuguese. I like to sing in French. But always being Cuban. I don't want to pretend that I'm something that I'm not. I'm totally Cuban, even if I'm singing in Japanese. So that's, that's my big inspiration from La Lupe. And we have a lot of music to do. We just don't play salsa. We play a lot of stuff. So, I said I want to make an album with 10 different rhythms, authentic, from Cuba. So at the end I got 12 inside that album. And I'm still missing a lot, authentic Cuban rhythms. I mean I had, in Cuba Fony, I have like Pilon, Songo, eh, Changui, Guajira, Tambo Congo, eh, Afro, Rumba. But I'm missing conga, dengue, suku suku, eh, contra danza, yeah, aqua, eh, alomonte. I'm missing a lot of stuff. So I need to do like four other albums to put together authentic Cuban rhythms. So even now when I play this project, people say that it's really, it's, it's like too many things. And sometimes it's quite complicated to, to follow it because it's, too much information, but that's Cuba, man. It's too much information, it's hard to follow. It's for me, being Cuban, I don't know a lot of Cuban things that I should know because it's so much stuff to, to study. You have to spend like ages of your life in every single little uh, town of Cuba to understand more your culture. So I will make more albums of Cuban music when I get 50 years old, 70 years old, 90 years old, if I'm still alive, of just Cuban music in different ways. So, yes. 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 so at the end of the day, um, what's next? Just keep fighting for my country, man. So how do your spiritual beliefs influence your music? Um, I, I always explain to people that I fell in love first with Santeria music. And I think it happens to a lot of people in the world, especially when they discover uh, after Cuban music, because it's really rich, it has a lot of uh, drummings uh, and different songs for every saint, and a lot of saints. So when I discover 
amplitude of music, I was like 17 years old, and I, and I, I mean, I almost fall over. I was like, oh my God, this, this is amazing. This is what I want to do. And later, later, I just got crowned like three years ago. So later on in time, I decided to be a practitioner. But for me, the 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 way for Santeria was the music. So um, if I tell you about my influences from Santeria to my music, that's the answer. Music is my religion, um, that's why I'm practicing San Santeria because Santeria is music too. So, because we are 11 millions of people in Cuba and we are 12 millions of musicians in Cuba. <laughs> so all we need is, is, is to come down. I mean, we, we, we need people to come down to Cuba, but not looking for what you want to hear, looking for what we have there. Because yeah. Yeah. when people come to Cuba, they just want to listen to the music that they know. And what is different is like, this is weird, this is not Cuban music, because there is a lot of misunderstanding. It's a gap in between the 60s and now of information that people don't know. We had we had a lot of musicians from Los Bam Bam to Elena Burke to listen to it. I mean, I'm not a crazy phenomenon of the Cuban. I'm just one person in, the, in, in that country. There is a lot of Cuban young guys making different music because we are the result of that uh, background that we have. So don't go to Cuba expecting uh, to listen the same type of music or that has like 100 years old. Go to Cuba to listen all the stuff we have there. And for me, that's the way to start opening the relationships in between you and me. You know, it's like, don't expect me to do what do you want me to do. Expect me, expect you to, to, to me being myself and being what I want to do. And then you're going to get my soul. That's Cuban music and that's Cuban people. Paraswayo, Omoya la Wana, Mama y Kenya y Rawo. Oh, Paraswayo, so much for celebrating 50 years of the summer of love and this was a concert of love yes. again yes. bringing love from cuba sharing it and this is what it's all about and i think it was a great gift that you brought us here to san francisco looking forward to come back here guys thank you so much for sharing some time with me it's a great day let's show some love <laughs>